About 15 years ago, um, my wife and I were in Florida, um, and we happened to come across a shop that sold fossils, gems, minerals, um, and I was surprised to see that you could buy entire skeletons, um, dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. Um, and I thought this was a, you know, quite, quite amazing and really fascinating thing to do. So I asked, spoke to the shopkeeper and he uh, told me about a fossil show that occurs every year in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, and I decided I would go to the next one, uh, which I did. Um, I met a bunch of dealers who sell, uh, routinely sell dinosaur and other fossils. The Raptor X is uh, a fascinating uh, tyrannosaur um, that uh, first came to light about six years ago. Um, and I was attending the Tucson Fossil Show, um, and uh, a dealer that I'd gotten to know over the years approached me with some photographs of a specimen that he had just gotten a hold of. And um, I was, I guess, the first person he showed these pictures to. And I could see that it was a, a small carnivorous dinosaur. Um, it was uh, in a block of, of matrix, which is the rock that encases bones. Um, and this, this animal um, had not been removed from the rock. It was still in a, in a big block of, uh, of basically stone. Um, but enough of it had been uh, exposed that, that I could tell uh, that it uh, was a carnivore uh, and that it was most likely a, a tyrannosaur. Um, you could see part of an arm uh, and part of the skull. Um, and so I thought it was a juvenile uh, of an adult tyrannosaurus, a large um, animal similar to a T-Rex that comes from Asia. Um, and so when I bought it, I, I was imagining that you know, once this was prepared, it would uh, decorate my living room and I'd, I'd be able to study this basically miniature tyrannosaur. Um, which, which was really quite an extraordinary thing to own. So I bought it, and um, then I had it prepared by a team in Utah. Um, and it took two, two people working for a, a full year to, to separate the rock, rock from, the, from the bones. And when that was completed, they showed it to a paleontologist um, who was the curator of the Denver Museum of Natural History named Ken Carpenter. Um, and when he looked at it, um, he determined that it was an adult, or a nearly full-grown animal, uh, not a juvenile. Uh, it was about nine feet long. And um, there are no real tyrannosaurs of that size that have ever been, been found um, that, that grew to just uh, that small size. Um, so it was clearly new to science. And so he sent me a letter urging me to donate it to a museum or someplace where it could be kept in perpetuity, studied, you know, described, and, and so on. Um, and when I got that letter and, and found out that this was not uh, a juvenile tarbosaurus, which is what I thought, uh, I realized that I was going to have to give this away. I wasn't going to be able to keep such an important animal. Uh, this wouldn't be right. Um, but I chose to give it to a, um, a paleontologist that I'd come to, to admire, um, who's up in uh, Chicago, a fellow named Paul Serino. Um, and I thought Paul might be the, the best person uh, to describe this animal and, and take good care of it and make it available to scholars. So I called him and offered to, to donate it to the University of Chicago and he was very pleased to have it. He had just established a relationship with a museum in China, uh, in Inner Mongolia, um, where specimens like this could be given an acquisition number and ultimately repatriated uh, to China, um, but could remain in the United States as long as uh, he would want to have them uh, for study and photography and documentation. Um, so this would be the first specimen that would kind of be treated in that way, and I thought that was really a, a great idea. Uh, um, yes, well, my wife wanted the dinosaur named after uh, my parents, um, and so she asked Paul if, uh, if he would consider doing that. Um, and so he ultimately decided to do it. But it was certainly it was his choice as to you know what name to give it, uh, and he's the one who um, came up with the Raptor Rex uh, genus name. So Raptor Rex is the genus, and Krigsteini is the species. <laughs> I guess I'm proud of that, um, and my parents you know were honored by by that, and um, I think. Uh, since I don't have the dinosaur any longer, it's, it certainly uh, makes it well worth um, you know, going through the donation process. The public, I think, is interested in Tyrannosaurus generally. Uh, and so because this has to do with a very famous and popular dinosaur, uh, it's, you know, it's got a lot of interest. Um, but the scientific importance um, you know, relates really to that one branch of, of dinosaurs, of theropods. Uh, it gives us some um, new sort of puzzling facts to, to contend with regarding the um, development of the body plan of, of Tyrannosaurus. Um, it shows that uh, most of the Tyrannosaur features, um, the relatively large skull, uh, the long legs, the small forearms, uh, evolved uh, pretty early on and persisted for a long time. 
and when things persist like that in the, in the fossil record in, in that over evolutionary time, um, it indicates that it was a very successful design. Um, and it shows that Tyrannosaur sort of blueprint, you know, w was around for quite a while. Uh, and that it worked you know, on a small scale as well as on a giant scale. <laughs>